Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon if you're watching this in the afternoon. I hope you've had a productive week one. Um, week two really dives into a little more details in regards to the legal system, kind of the backbone of our U.S. legal system. It's really, really interesting. If you do not kind of gauge yourself and know chapter two, then you're going to be lost for the rest. Um, I guess you, you could say you're going to be lost for the rest of the course. So make sure you know chapter two. Make sure you know a lot about it. The legal system in the U.S. can be confusing at times, but at the same time, I think it's really interesting for us to know and for us to gauge as healthcare professionals. Um, so it's really interesting. Uh, and of course, just opening things up. If you have any other questions or you have any concerns, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to meet you in the office if need be. Uh, I know we didn't talk a lot about uh, the exams and such that we'll have, but of course those will be in person, and, and so will the um, uh, the presentation that we'll have, the APA presentation, um, coming up in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be in person. That'll have you. We'll give you some time to to ask questions during that period too. But if you have questions before that, feel free to reach out anytime. But chapter two, the legal system, really really interesting. Hope you read your chapter as kind of outlined in your your course uh, information that uh, you have. You'll already kind of be ahead of the schedule. Um, so of course, healthcare professionals must have a good understanding of the legal system. We talked about that just to protect yourself and, and to protect your patients as well. You want to understand you know, what the process is in regards to uh, what may or may not happen. Um, if you're called into question, or if you're called into court, you want to know exactly how the U.S. system works. Uh, I think there's a lot of details that are kind of intricate uh, to to the needs of uh, society today. Um, and it's a lot different than other countries. So make sure you understand where you're at and what you have to deal with if something happens. Um, of course, you have three branches of government. You have the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. And each of these branches make up uh, the U.S. legal system. Uh, it's really, really important to know that the three-tiered system uh, of course, when we look back at the colonial days, uh, when they were shaping the government, it came from, a lot of this came from England and the, the way things were set up and the, the fact that the, the colonial um, members of the Continental Congress felt persecuted. Uh, so they created three branches of government to share power uh, so that one doesn't have the ultimate authority over the other. The legislative branch, of course, is lawmaking. It's the Senate and House of Representatives, Congress, and the executive branch would be the president and their, uh, his or her associated cabinet uh, and advisors. Of course, they have enforced the law, and there's certain elements that the president has control of. Uh, and then the judicial branch, uh, which is the judge and federal court system. I'm sure everyone has heard the news about Supreme Court judges over the past little bit with the Kavanaugh cases that occurred, but definitely... A lot of power there. Of course, the president nominates Supreme Court justices and they're voted on by the legislative branch. Really, really essential and really um, kind of a broad power stroke that the, the executive branch has. This is a little outline of the branches of government. Really, really interesting to take a look at. Um, I think this helps kind of underline the, the meaning behind reasoning and uh, just to know that the, the, con the Constitution, of course, is the, the earmark for everything that happens in society. Uh, a lot of people will argue against this, but it definitely has held the framework for the U.S. as we know it for the past 200 years. Um, and it's, I think it's done a pretty good job. So you have constitutional law, statutory and regulatory law, and then common or case law. Common law came down from, of course, England. Uh, you saw a lot of that in the colonial period. Statutory and regulatory law are uh, passed by legislative bodies, and the constitutional law is the you know the impact between people, citizens, and their government. You know, you hear about the constitution; it protects the government uh, from from making, of course, mistakes uh, that may impact the people in a negative way. So you have two classification of laws you have public law and private law and you can read a little bit more in detail about public and private law but public law of course is criminal uh, these are open court systems administrative constitutional or international uh, private law would be a tort a contract violation 
the property inheritance issue. You know, those are just some examples. And I think this diagram right here really outlines a little more in detail some interesting components of criminal and, and civil law. I find it very interesting. Civil law, of course, concerns relationships between individuals and other individuals. There's lots of different information in regards to civil law that uh, you potentially would be familiar with if you've had issues with court cases with your family or anyone uh, along those lines. Um, you know, divorce court would fall into civil law, of course. Tort law is civil injury or wrongful act. I'll catch up a little bit with my paper slides. Um, a lot of interesting components of, of tort law that you should be aware of. Um, of course, torts usually result in harm. That's really important to, to know. Um, and they can be intentional, of course, or unintentional, depending on the circumstance. Um, intentional laws, of course, are assault and battery. Know the difference between assault and battery. Uh, batteries, of course, actually touching someone. Assault is, you know, it could be verbal. Um, you know, threatening, things like that. False imprisonment happens um, at times, you know, holding people against their will, uh, defamation of character or slander and fraud uh, or embezzlement. People embezzle money quite a bit. Defamation of character is another thing that you might hear quite a bit uh, depending on, you know, what circumstances you're in. But there's been defamation of character cases out there. And I'm going to show you how to look for a court case here in a bit. Unintentional torts, of course, would be negligence, like not meaning to make a mistake that you make. Um, you know, this happens a lot with healthcare workers. Um, doing something that a reasonable person would not end up doing. Um, it's really essential to know what you're supposed to be doing and making sure you have the background uh, to do it before you try to do it. Uh, and that way you don't make a mistake. But that's an unintentional tort negligence would be. Contract law. Um, is an agreement, of course. It can be verbal or, or written. Um, there are verbal contracts that are held under law. Sometimes they're hard to prove, but it usually takes a witness. Uh, but contract law uh, often happens when there's a breach. Um, a lot of you have contracts. You might not even know it. If you have a cell phone um, and you're paying a monthly fee um, or if you're paying off a a uh, cell phone with your company you have a contract if you have cable TV for 12 months you have a contract let's see what else if you have a car you're supposed to pay on a monthly basis that's a contract of course this can all result in legal legal issues if you fail to pay uh, or they could take the vehicle phone or whatever needed away from you which is really interesting uh, if you think about it so you have express contracts, implied contracts, uh, verbal, nonverbal, of course, um, and then you can have a breach of contract. We just talked about that in a little bit of detail. How about public and criminal law? It protects the public from harmful acts from others. What about sexual assault? Um, that would be one thing that would be considered public criminal law. Um, government prosecuting someone. Uh, that violates the law. Of course, the government does because the state, you heard about district attorney's offices. You know, there's a lot of uh, setup that goes into protecting people, um, you know, public defender uh, or accusing people on the other end. So this is really all part of the state plan. Um, they can be felonies and misdemeanors because of it. The court system, there's two, of course, state and federal courts. Each has different responsibilities and depends on what kind of crimes are committed. If it's a federal crime, of course, it can go through the federal side of things. If it's a state crime, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but there's a lot of ins and outs that you really don't have to memorize, but just know that the two, two court systems are there, state and federal. Uh, you have the U.S. Supreme Court at the top, and then it kind of trickles down from there. But the Court of Appeals, you have the ability to appeal, uh, of course, depending on the outcome. Um, you know, the tax court, for example, you have the, the agency after that, you have a district court, and then you have a Court of Appeals. Uh, it depends on whether or not they want to pick it up, but you, of course, are uh, able to access courts in regards to appeal settings. Um, you know, each state has a court of appeals, and then you uh, 
uh, have the Supreme Court, and then each on the federal side, you have the Court of Appeals or Circuit Court, and then the Supreme Court. Um, and there's a lot of legality pieces that go into what you can and cannot take from federal or state pieces, but uh, just know the broad basis of it. The trial, of course, on the public setting is a grand jury, 23 private citizens that hear about the case, they determine it, and they vote whether or not to move to indictment or to a trial court. And then, of course, during a court session, I'm sure you've all watched certain movies. Uh, I think an interesting movie for you to watch, it does have some some language in it, so uh, be wary of that. But the movie Fracture is interesting in regards to a court movie. You can watch a little bit more about uh, how courts work and litigation. That has to do with a, a public crime of murder. Um, so you have a district attorney and, of course, a public defender there. Um, but there are further information uh, pieces in there that you might find useful. So, of course, you have litigation, uh, and you have the plaintiff, of course, and then all the, the, the pieces in there that help make up the trial procedure. And then a trial, closing argument, and then an appeal. And I'm going to start moving a little quick because we're running out of time, and I want to show you how you look up some, some different types of court cases that might be helpful for you when you do your APA uh, presentation. There's a subpoena process, of course. The court can order you to deliver records under penalty of perjury. Um, and a lot of times this can be healthcare records, so keep that in mind. Healthcare records can be accessible if the court system uh, issues a subpoena, depending on the need. And then you can have expert witness. A lot of times doctors are expert witnesses. They're generally paid, of course, but... Uh, they pick up extra experience and they help with the court case dependent upon uh, what might be happening. If it's a provider issue, an expert witness that you might bring in would be someone who specialized in that practice for quite a while. And moving on to the final slide. When you testify in court, make sure you tell the truth. Lying never gets you anywhere. Uh, I guess you could say in life, make sure you tell the truth. Make sure you understand what you're saying. Don't memorize testimony because it seems false. Uh, but just be accurate in your thought process. So as we look at further information in regards to our APA project that's going to come up with a presentation, you know, it's got to be uh, based on the page requirements, uh, and those are listed in your Blackboard. Um, so I'm not going to give that away. I want you to go look for yourself so you understand the requirements. And then you have the presentation piece, and I want you to make sure you present in an accurate manner as well. But it's really good. It's supposed to be fun and informative. Make sure you use Google Scholar. It's really, really helpful. So if I go and type in court cases um, for murder, you know, there'll be a lot of interesting things that come up. And the good thing about Google Scholar is it's scholarly reviewed articles. I don't want you using Wikipedia or a .com website. Um, and the interesting thing, scrolling through here, you can see PDFs. So you can click on this PDF and it pulls it right up something that you could look at to help you in the process of, of learning. Um, you know, and, and you know it's accurate. You know you can work around uh, you know anything that you find in Google Scholar. If you want to cite it, and you're going to have to cite everything that you pull, of course, because we don't want to plagiarize, you click this button. We're going to use APA citation. So you just sit there and copy it, and you can put that in uh, to your paper. Uh, that way you're doing the correct form of citation. Um, just to give you another another example, I'll go down here, click something else. This is a book. I can still cite this book. And if I click APA, it's an APA format. So this is a really, really interesting tool that you can use. I think it's fascinating um, that it's you know not used as much as it should be, uh, but it's very, very helpful. Like I said, if you have any questions, concerns, you need more information, you're confused on a subject matter, please feel free to reach out to me. Happy to help in any way I can, and uh, looking forward uh, to continuing uh, uh, working through chapters. Chapter three will be next, or um, uh, lecture three will be next, rather. And uh, I think it'll be a, a really, really interesting uh, component that we go over. Uh, let me know if you need anything. Feel free to reach out. Thanks for all your work, uh, and we'll talk to you guys soon.